hi guys welcome back again to my youtube channel in today's video i am going to be sharing how i made this lovely crop shirt with lapel or camp collar and a ladder design sleeve it has a cut together pant or trouser and i will show you how i achieved all of this in this video hit the subscribe button and let's get started the measurements and materials needed is on your screen guys here with me is three and a half yards of fabric I have cut out the one for the pants and this is what I have left for the crop shirt. First, place your fabric on fold like this. And to know the amount of fabric to fold in, the bust is the largest part of our upper bodies. So I will divide my bust by 4. 36 divided by 4 is 9 inches. Because the crop shirt is a little bit free at the bust area, I will add half inch to make it 9.5 inches plus 1 or 2 inch seam allowance. That's a total of 10.5 inches. You can decide to add extra 1 or 2 inches. That's if you want yours bigger. I want mine a little bit free. That's why I added half inch. So I'll add extra 4 or 5 inches to the 10.5 inches. This will be for the facing and button allowance. Guys, I used 4 inches in this video but after sewing it did not cover very well so please extend yours to five inches do not worry you will understand better when it's time to cover the collar this one we are cutting now is the front pattern and like i said the five inches will be for the facing of the front and also for the button this five inches is kind of universal for all this casual vintage shirt with camp collar one inch out of the five inches will be for button allowance then the remaining four inches will be for the facing of the front next i will add five inches to the ten and a half inches to sum it up to 15 and a half inches please if you are confused just play back the video so you understand better i will go ahead and mark it out for our horizontal measurement then for the vertical measurement the shirt length i am working with is 18 and a half plus one and a half inch seam and hemming allowance that's a total of 20 inches I will mark it out here, shift and mark it out again to get a straight horizontal line. Then get my ruler and connect it like this. After that, I will get my scissors and do the first cutting for the front piece. Next, I will place my tape here and start marking out the 5 5 inches. Mark it from the shoulder line down to the hem line. After marking it out, use your ruler and connect the marks with a straight line or you fold it like this. Confirm that it's up to 5 inches, please. Get iron and press it down so as to secure the marks. Next, remember I said 1 inch from the 5 inches will be for button allowance while the remaining will be for the turning or facing. So I will get my tape and start marking out 1 inch from the shoulder line down to the hem line. Make sure it's visible enough and remember the 1 inch is for button allowance. After that, you draw a straight line on the marks and keep it aside. I will get the remaining fabric place it on foot just like we did for the front pattern get the front pattern and place it on the back pattern place and arrange it properly exactly the way i am doing in this video remember the one inch we marked out for button place the front pattern in such a way that the back pattern starts from the one inch mark the back has no button please that is why you have to make sure that the center back starts exactly from the one inch here, I am using my tape to confirm that the center back is one inch away from the front pattern. Just watch closely and do exactly what I am doing in this video so you won't get confused, please. As you can see, I have placed it properly and I believe yours is like this as well. The next thing I'm going to do is to extend the back pattern length by 3 inches. So, I will place my tape like this with the 3 inches directly on the shoulder line of the front pattern and mark out 3 inches with my chalk. I will shift to this end and mark it out again, then get my ruler and draw Draw a straight line on the mark. That becomes the shoulder line from the back pattern. Next, I will get my scissors and trace out the back pattern with the front pattern. After cutting out the back pattern, this is what I have. As you can see, I took out my 1 inch button allowance. And this is it. Next, I will pull up the front piece to meet up with the back piece shoulder line so that we can start taking the measurement. First, I will place my tape here and mark out 2.5 inches. 
After marking it out, I will get my ruler and slightly draw a straight line from here down to the two and a half inches mark. Get my scissors and cut through the line. That's it for the shoulder slant. Next, I will pull down the front pattern back to where it was. Arrange it properly, then fold down the back shoulder by one and a half inches. If you have iron, you go ahead and secure the fold with your pressing iron so that the fabric doesn't shift or something. Next, I will divide my shoulder measurement by two. 15 divided by two is seven and a half inches plus one inch ease and seam allowance. I will mark it at eight and a half inches. Divide your armhole by two inches plus half inch ease and seam allowance. If you don't know your armhole measurement, divide your board by six and add one and a half inches i will mark out my armhole at eight inches then to draw the armhole curve i will first draw a straight line from the shoulder mark down to the armhole mark next i will come to the center of the straight line and go in by half inch here i am cross checking to make sure that it's at the center after marking it out I will get my curve, place it well such that it's touching the half inch mark. Then I will draw the armhole curve like this. Here I am trying to make the chalk visible enough for you guys to see it well. I will get my scissors. Please watch closely. For the back armhole, I will just cut it like this. Do not go in by half inch, just like you see me doing in the video. Carefully cut it well to avoid mistake, please. After cutting, remember both the front and back pattern is here so i will raise the front pattern small and cut through the half inch like this and that will be all for the armhole cutting do not forget to secure the folds with your pressing iron remember this is our five inches fold i will get my scissors and notch it like this next is to cut the neck first i will open up this a little then take down the one and a half inches back again Place my tape here and mark out one inch. That's the one inch for button allowance. After that, I will place my tape on the one inch mark and go in by three inches for the wideness of the neck. For the neck depth, I will place my tape here on the shoulder line and come down by four inches. Here with my chalk, I am extending the four inches mark so as to form a straight line with it like this. Also extend the four inches line upwards thereby forming a square like shape this will make it easier for us to curve the neckline so i will just get my curve place it this way and curve the neckline after curving it i will come up here and also curve this end for the back neckline i will place my tape here and mark out three inches for the wideness then use my chalk to curve it down to meet up with the front curve like this after marking and curving it well I will get my scissors and start cutting the back neck from here through the curve to this very end like this. I did not depin the neck any further, just cut it through like that. As you can see, the wideness rhymes together. Next, I will start cutting the front neckline from here towards the curve down to this very end. When you get to the one inch we marked out for button, you stop. This is only for the front neckline, please then come up here and start cutting through this one inch line when you get to the neck depth you stop i will come back to this side and cut out everything i will fold up this back pattern shoulder and as you can see the front and back neck width rhymes together i will just trim off here a little guys this is what my front and back pattern looks like we have taken down the measurements already. The crop shirt is a little bit free, so I will use the round bust measurement for both the waist and the top length. Here, I am cross-checking the armhole to confirm that it's correct. That's all for the cutting, guys. Next thing is to cut the sleeve. So here is the remaining fabric. I will fold it up like this. The sleeve length I am working with is 9 inches plus 2 inches seam and hemming allowance. Because I want to cut the two sleeves at the same time, I will confirm the length and fold it again like this. So here, if you notice, the length has reduced to 7 inches, but this is just for me because I want the plain red border to be at the down part of my sleeve. Here is the border piece. I just like the design and I have cut it out, so I will just replace it at the down part of my sleeve. Please listen guys, this border stuff is just because I like it, so please do not be confused. Just fold your fabric into four like this 
and use your exact sleeve length measurement. Do not forget to add 2 inches seam and hemming allowance. So after folding, you can join me from here. Place your tape here and mark out 4 inches. Then place it like this again and confirm the armhole measurement plus 1 inch ease and seam allowance. Make sure it matches with the armhole of the main pattern. I will just mark it out at 8.5 inches with my chalk. Then get my ruler and first draw a straight line. Then get a curve and curve from the sleeve cap like this down to meet with the armhole we marked out. Please note that my body measurement and yours must not be the same. So calculate yours and use it next for the round sleeve measurement i will divide it by two 13 divided by two is six and a half plus half inch is allowance because i don't want it to be fitted that's seven inches i will mark it out like this plus extra half or one inch seam allowance that's a total of eight inches after marking it out i will come down to the hem part and repeat the same thing then with my ruler i will connect from the armhole mark down to the hem part like this after that please go ahead and start cutting through the lines on your own pattern for me because of that border design stuff i will shift it out small and first cut through here for the boat sleeve please do not be confused just play back so you can catch up and understand better after cutting i will get the border design piece and place it back like this and then continue cutting after cutting, this is what I have. I will keep it aside, get the body pattern, separate the front from the back piece. This is what the back pattern looks like. It's just one piece. I will get the front. Do not forget to notch these ends up and down. I will open it up and as you can see, it's two pieces. That's because it's going to have a button. Next is to couple the front and back. I will get the back pattern, place it right side facing up. Get one piece of the front and place it right side facing down on the back piece. Fold back this 5 inches button and facing allowance. Get the other front piece. I will fold in the 5 inches and take it up to meet the back shoulder. I will take it to my sewing machine, join the both shoulders first and show you guys. This is it guys, I am done joining the shoulders and this is what it looks like, very neat. Next I will bring down the front piece like this, arrange it properly to meet the hem part. I will take it to my sewing machine to join the both sides. I will use the seam allowance we added to stitch down just as my index finger is directing. I will bring down the other side, arrange it carefully and also join the side. But before joining or coupling the sides, we need to fix the sleeves first. This is the sleeve. I have joined the border design and as you can see, it's very fine. So this is the already cut sleeves. Make sure to curve your sleeve properly so it fits well after joining. Also, notch the center cap. In case you are having issues sewing and fixing your sleeve, maybe after cutting or sewing, it doesn't fit well. Check out the video card that just appeared at the top right of your screen to watch the well-detailed tutorial video on how to draft, cut and sew a basic sleeve. Or later, you check the description box because I will attach it there. If you look properly at the sleeve, you will notice there is a ladder design at the center of the sleeve. Here, I am marking out 1.25 inch for the ladder design rungs but before we continue here is our crop shirt remember i am supposed to couple it up by joining the sides but like i said earlier we need to fix the sleeve first before we couple the shirt so i will arrange it well making sure the both armhole matches i will get my scissors and notch this center here i will repeat same for this other shoulder end this is the ladder design sleeve looking very neat i will fold it like this this is the second one fold it very well and notch the sleeve cup center i don't want the video to be long so it doesn't bore you guys i have a separate video on how i achieved the ladder design on the sleeve check the video card that just appeared to watch it now or later you check the description box below for the well detailed ladder sleeve tutorial remember we are still going to cut the lapel or camp collar in this video so please keep watching Guys, after sewing the sleeves, please notch the centers first, also on the shirt. Next is to join the sleeve to the shirt. We will join the sleeve first before fixing the collar. I will get the two sleeves, 
open and spread the shirt like this get the sleeve place it like this on the shirt center to center the place we notched facing each other get my office pin and start pinning it down i will get the second sleeve and repeat the same thing this is me pinning down the sleeve to the armhole of the shirt from the shoulder down to the armhole after pinning it down this is what i have i will get my pin and also pin this other side down after everything this is what i have i will take it to my sewing machine and stitch it down as i stitch i remove the pins this is it guys i am done stitching and it's very neat as you can see everything rhymes no mistake whatsoever now is the coupling time i will arrange it properly like this take it to my sewing machine and start stitching from the sleeve end here just as my index finger is directing down to the hem part of the shirt i will also arrange this side and repeat the same thing and show you guys i am done coupling the shirt and this is what i have it's very neat i will go ahead and turn it right side out next i will get this soft gum place it here on this five inches facing and cut out two like this for the two sides i will open it up then gum it down to the five inches with my iron and show you guys here as you can see i have gum it down only on the five inches facing this is because this my fabric is kind of thick it's not a light fabric if you are working with a light fabric you can gum down the bigger part of the front with it so next i will place the front like this arrange it properly please make sure it's equal then carefully cut out this after cutting it this is what it looks like i will get my scissors and notch this very end for the both sides of the front after that i will arrange it like this get my tape and measure the neck so as to know the length of the collar that i will cut out please place it well to avoid one side getting bigger than the other also use this opportunity to measure your own neck and cross check that is the same measurement with what you have at the neck here so i got like nine inches which is nine times two equals 18 inches my round neck is 18 please if your neck is bigger go ahead and trim it with your scissors now just from the front do not trim from the back please so i will use the 18 inches i measured to cut out the collar i will get the remaining fabric first fold it like this then fold it again that's into four now for the collar length because my neck is 18 my collar is going to be 16 inches 16 divided by 2 is 8 inches plus half inch seam allowance that becomes eight and a half inches so i will mark out eight and a half inches like this then place my tape like this and mark out two inches after marking out two for this end i will come to the center here and mark out three and a half inches after marking it out i will get my curve place it on the marks like this and curve from the three and a half inches down to the two inches mark next i will get my scissors and cut it out this is what it looks like after cutting i will open it up and this is it i will get a gum stay and iron it to the collar all round after gumming it this is what it should look like turn to the wrong side of the fabric fold it like this and first stitch down both ends after sewing it i will turn it right side out iron it and run a stitch on it just as my index finger is directing after that i will fold it like this and notch it with my scissors keep it aside get the shirt and notch the center back neckline as well to join it i will spread the shirt like this get the collar place it on the shirt neck with both notched center facing each other i will get my office pin and start pinning the collar down to the shirt from the center back to where the collar ends after joining getting to this end i will open up the five inches button and facing allowance remember this very part that i asked you guys to notch please watch closely open it up and fold it inside like this then start stitching from the notched point i will get my pin and pin it down i will continue arranging and pinning it down getting to this end you fold it in by half inch before your final stitch i will come to this other side and start stitching getting to this end again i will open up the five inches fold it in and start sewing from the notched point i will pin it down then getting towards the end of the five inches i will fold it in by half inch before the final stitching i will take it to my sewing machine sew it and show you guys 
i am done sewing and this is it guys next i will turn it out like this with my scissors for the both sides of the front after turning it out next is to weave the neck just as my index finger is directing from here all the way to this very end where the stitch stopped I am done weaving it. Please weave yours for a neat finishing. I have also ironed it very well. Our collar is very neat as well. Next, for the down part, open up the 5 inches allowance like this. Fold it in like this and stitch through before turning it for a neat finishing. Then follow the same line to hem the down part of the shirt with the hemming allowance we added earlier. Use this hemming gum to seal up the 5 inches allowance if yours is opening up. Next, for the button, I used a press button for my crop shirt and I decided to start fixing it 8 inches from my shoulder. Then for the spacing of the button, you can decide to use 2 and half to 3 inches spacing to fix the button. For the trouser tutorial video, check the video card link that just appeared to watch it now or later you check the description box. I will attach all the videos I talked about there. Click on this picture to subscribe now. Thank you guys so much for watching till now. Bye.